Good afternoon and welcome to St. Joseph's University. Welcome Governor Wolf and welcome to the elected officials present for this event today. State Representative Morgan Cephas, State Representative Pam Delisio, State Representative Mary Jo Daly, and Philadelphia City Councilman Curtis Jones. Welcome to all of you. Thank you very much for being here. For those of you who, who do not know me, my name is Mark Reed, and I have the pleasure of serving as the 28th president of St. Joseph's University. And as president, one of the privileges or perks of the job, and as the governor can probably attest, sometimes the perks are relatively few and far between in these jobs. But one of the real perks and real pleasures is getting to welcome um, people like Governor Wolf, as well as our distinguished panel and guests here today. It truly is a pleasure to have you here and thank you for choosing us as the location to have this important discussion here today. I'm sure there are some guests in the audience who have never visited our campus before, so I would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you as well. It's a wonderful opportunity for everyone here to learn more about the redistricting of congressional districts throughout our Commonwealth. And I'm particularly happy that there are at St. Joseph's University students present for this discussion. And I looked around the room as I came in and I see many of our students here and I'm excited about that. The governor and I were just talking briefly beforehand and you in many respects, all right, some of you have voted already, some of you uh, will vote in your first major elections coming up. It's important that you're here, it's important that you get educated about the issues and participate uh, as an engaged citizen of our Commonwealth and of our country. So thank you again, Governor Wolf, for choosing St. Joseph's University. And now I would like to turn things over to the moderator for today's discussion, Nadia Ralston, Southeast Regional Director for the Governor. Thank you very much. Hello, how is everybody doing today? All right, so we're here to pretty much get your feedback and your comments around the issue of gerrymandering. Um, we wanna start off first so that we can get as many comments as possible, just with brief introductions from our panel. Of course, starting with the governor. I mean, because he's the governor, we have to let him speak first, right? And then we will go to Joe Powers, Carol Cunningham, Jasmine Sessoms, Micah Sims, and then Jonathan Marks. Governor? Thank you, Nadia, and, and uh, I just want to thank uh, everybody here at St. Joe's, President Reed, students, faculty, staff, everybody for hosting us today. Uh, every, everything that I've heard from Nadia, from everybody, you, you have made, uh, made us feel very welcome here. And I want to thank the panelists for participating in this. Um, as Nadia said, uh, we're not, uh, here to answer any questions. We're, I'm actually, and I think all of us are here to, to, to listen. I have responsibility with the state Supreme Court ruling uh, to be the arbiter uh, in a decision as to what a fair map looks like going forward. And I think that's really important in, in Pennsylvania. And I've been a politician now for three years. Uh, we have to do things to get to a good place with public policies. But that's only part of our job. The second part of our job is to be stewards of a grand democratic tradition. And we're not doing our job if we're just doing one of those things. And I think for so too long, people in, in politics have not regarded that second responsibility as important. And therefore, for, for so many people, including probably many of you in this room, there's a deep cynicism about the democratic system that really is not a spectator sport. It's something that, that really demands participation. And anything that, that, that makes people shy away from participating is just a bad thing. I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat, a liberal conservative, we've got to start with a fair system. Uh, and I think this is our chance to start that, taking back our democracy with, with a fair system. And I look forward to your comments and I look forward to this whole process. Thanks. Hi, my name is Joe Powers. I'm an adjunct professor of political science here at St. Joseph's University. I teach several classes, including state and local government, Pennsylvania politics, and currently campaigns and elections. And right now we are discussing redistricting in class. Prior to coming here, I spent about 37 years in state government, including a tour of duty in the Senate and a tour of duty in the House. 
And during that time, I got to watch the evolution of the redistricting process going back over the last four cycles. And so it's something that's of very considerable interest to me and we'll enjoy the conversation today. I'm Carol Cunningham, Chair of Fair Districts PA, a coalition of organizations and citizens from all parties, all parts of the state who believe gerrymandering undermines our democracy and threatens the integrity of our elections. We believe the ultimate solution is an independent citizens commission with strong safeguards for transparency and public input. We've been gaining support for a constitutional amendment that would put such a commission in place. At present, House Bill 722 has 102 co-sponsors, the most of any bill introduced in this session. Senate Bill 22 has 16 co-sponsors. Both of them are stuck in committee while we continue to ask that they be given hearings. Since January 2016, we have held over 350 public meetings attended by almost 18,000 people. As a full-time volunteer, I've traveled across the state to speak about the harm done to our communities and our economy by distorted maps and backroom maneuvers. Everywhere I go, I am met by citizens concerned about our state, concerned about the toxic political climate, and determined to do what they can to bring gerrymandering to an end. And I'm pleased to see many of those citizens are here in the room today. If you look around, you can see the Fair District's PA t-shirts. We have more than 4,000 volunteers on our volunteer email list, people who are speaking, petitioning, advocating, lobbying, doing everything that they can think of, incredibly creative people working to reclaim our democracy from, from gerrymandering. We want to see our towns, cities, counties, and communities represented fairly, not cracked into pieces and left without a voice. We want to see an end to the current conflict of interest that undermines our constitutional right to free and equal elections. We welcome and hope for and wait for an interim solution a congressional district map that ensures real choice and the possibility that our votes really count. And Governor Wolf, we thank you for retaining the help of nonpartisan experts to ensure a transparent process and genuinely fair map. We thank you for taking time to hear from voters, and we ask our legislative leaders to do the same. Thank you. Thank you. Carol puts me to shame. Um, hi everyone, my name is Jasmine Sessoms and I am the founder and CEO of an organization called She Can Win. And our mission, we're completely nonpartisan, but we train women to run for office. When you think about gerrymandering, you think that it is an uneven playing field. And some of that comes from the lack of women represented in our government. We truly advocate for all women across both sides of the aisle to get into office because when you have a fair representation, it makes for a better working government. So I'm really looking forward to hearing everyone's comments and thoughts about uh, the topic. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Micah Sims. I am the Executive Director of Common Cause Pennsylvania. Common Cause is a nonpartisan a good government organization that has been in existence since 1974. For the last two decades, Common Cause, along with other good government groups, has been at the forefront of making sure that we find a way to end gerrymandering. We are part of, as Carol has indicated, the Fair Districts Coalition, and really believe in both House Bill, Senate, uh, House Bill 722 and Senate Bill 22, and the act of an independent redistricting commission. It is important that we understand one thing, is that if you don't bring values and talk about the values, the process will remain broken. And as we talk about gerrymandering, we, also, we oftentimes hear incumbency protection and things of that nature. But when we really go to the values of fairness, competitiveness, and racial equality, then we can develop a process that will help democracy in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I have a line that says, if you show up for democracy, democracy will show up for you. And obviously by your presence here today, we know that democracy is beginning to show up in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Jonathan Marks. I'm the commissioner of the Bureau of Commissions, Elections and Legislation at the Pennsylvania Department of State. And uh, our role, our function in all of this is really one of uh, being a resource. Uh, we. Um, being the agency that oversees the statewide voter registration database uh, and also collects maps uh, of precinct boundaries from 
County Election Office is we're kind of, uh, I guess the term I would use is middleman, um, and, and we try to promote transparency so that not only the General Assembly, the legislature uh, has access to the information, but also, uh, also voters and anyone else who is interested. So, uh, and this, this conversation is very fascinating to me. I've been an election administrator for, uh, for longer than I care to admit at this point, um, and I enjoy it very much. So thank you all for being here, great crowd. All right, so now we will open the floor up for comments and feedback. We will have Brenda here. Brenda, can you raise your hand so everyone can see you? She has her microphone, so when you're selected, I would just ask, because there's only one of her, if you could just kind of meet her um, to your closest end of aisle, um, and then we will get to your comment. So, who would like to start? I see a hand right here in the middle. Thank you. I didn't mean to be first, but I had one question. I'm getting to ask it. We can't get this these bills out of committee. I know one name is Metcalf. I don't know what the other name is. What do we as private citizens do to have the power to get the bills out of committee? So, yeah. So, um, I promised everybody up here that I have a big mouth, but I wouldn't just take over this thing. But maybe I could start. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, this came up yesterday in State College, and, and um, actually, uh, Aristotle. Mm, huh? What a way to yeah, start, huh? Go. I got you, I got you, right? <laughs> Aristotle talked about civic virtue as having a measure of shame involved. You have to be, have a sense of shame. And somebody yesterday suggested, can I just call up the chair of of each of these committees, and I think it's uh, Metcalf and Fulmer, is, yeah. is that right, mm -hmm. in the Senate, uh, and shame them and say, come on, this, this is about our democracy. I don't care what your political values are or what your partisan identification is. We're, we're talking about trying to make our democracy healthier here. And, and it really gets to the heart of what Aristotle was talking about, that it starts with a sense that we actually care what other people think. We have that sense of shame. So the, the, the person yesterday was suggesting maybe I can just call them up and start shaming them. That's what democracy actually is. That's part of what it is, is to say we shouldn't be doing this. You ought to be ashamed of yourself for creating maps like this. So let's start with that. Uh, the other thing I'd, I'd say is in a democracy, the governor, I was elected governor, not dictator, so I don't have the ability to actually go and, and release bills from committees. That's the leadership of each of those chambers. And so it wouldn't be a bad idea to maybe petition them and say, listen, get this out to the floor for a vote. I think it has wide support. I don't know what, what you think, but I think those, those bills probably have, have good support. And, and it's, they certainly are worthy of a good, healthy public debate. Uh, but the, the answer really lies in getting the people directly in charge, the committee chairs and the leaders of each of the chambers, to get those things out. Who are the leaders of the chambers? Well, Mike Terza is the Speaker of the House. And Joe Scarnati is the president pro tempore of the, of the Senate. Okay, and not that your questions are not uh, wanted, uh, but we really want to try to make this more of a listening session than a Q&A to really try to get your comments and feedback so the governor can take that information back to the legislature. So does anyone have a comment? All right, we have a gentleman right there. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Bill McDevitt. I'm on the faculty here at St. Joe's. Uh, the Constitution gives us the right to vote. And the Supreme Court of the United States declared that that right to vote is not just an ordinary right, it's a fundamental right. And the right to vote includes the right that our votes count. And our votes do not count when maps are drawn in such a way to assure that one party or another party is going to prevail in an election. So my comment is very brief, that the right to vote includes the right that your vote count, and in the current situation, my vote, I'm in that district where Mian is, does not count. Thank you. So let me. 
Thank you for that comment. And let me just say, uh, I'm on the board of the State League of Women Voters as well as being chair of Fair Districts PA, and that's precisely why the League brought the current lawsuit. Um, the League and Common Cause and other groups have, have petitioned our legislature repeatedly over the past 25 years to take our right to free and equal elections seriously. And that has not happened, which is why the League filed the lawsuit. We are really pleased that the State Supreme Court agreed that we have a fundal, r fundamental right to have our votes count, and that when gerrymandering makes the votes not count, then it's, it's unconstitutional. We're waiting to see what the, the federal court does. We're very hopeful that the federal court will say this is a state state's issue and that the state constitution guarantees us free and equal elections. We're hopeful for that and we're excited that the governor is taking seriously his role in furthering the maps, but we agree with you completely and that's precisely what this entire question is about. Is it, do we have the right to have our votes count and how do we, how do we, in, how do we help our legislature to see that what they've done has, has deprived, of, deprived us of that right? Okay, and I did see a hand right here in the front row. Oh, that, sure. The political scientist. The, the, uh, uh, the Constitution actually, the founders actually went with a decennial census in, in, in big part because they wanted to make sure, at least from a numerical point of view, votes did count because they were upset with the rotten borough system in, in Great Britain in the 18th century and earlier where boroughs with very little population actually had more votes than big cities because they hadn't had a census for, for many, many years. So at the heart of our Constitution is the, the idea that our maps have to reflect reality. Uh, they were talking about numerical reality, but I think this, this also means that it, it reflects uh, the reality of, of, of our society. <clears throat> Meg Sheketoff, um, I've been involved with Fair Districts for a while. Um, it's my understanding that there are a lot of computer models that do make Fair Districts so that you wouldn't have to have the legislature battle it out. First of all, it's hard to follow somebody who graduated from MIT and quotes Aristotle, but we'll, uh, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll do our best here. Uh, the first time I watched the redistricting process, the, the people who did it, their tools were pencils, uh, yellow legal tablets, uh, pocket calculators, and voter registration. What has changed over the 40 years are all the software programs that are now out there using GIS systems. We tend to think that this is something that has been going on since 1812 when Governor Elbridge Gerry Elbridge Gerry signed the, uh, the first gerrymandering act but it has really evolved to a point where there are more specific districts, there's more opportunity to draw districts or gerrymandered than has ever existed uh, before in our democracy. And there are maps. It is not all that difficult to do maps. Anybody with a software program could do it very quickly, and virtually every one that we could do would be better than the ones that we have right now in Pennsylvania, so you're absolutely correct. There are programs, and they can be used, and they should be used. Let me just add to that, though. Um, somebody has to decide. Somebody has to decide. So, so what are the parameters? So right now, the maps that we have were drawn by computer. And what became incredibly clear in the lawsuits that have played out recently is that the top priority, well, the very top priority was never mentioned in court, which was to give the top advantage to one party. But the second top priority was discussed very freely and unapologetically, which was to protect incumbents and to make sure incumbents had, had districts that kept them in office. There was no apology about that. And then there are the other, the other parameters. So it's really important that the people who are determining what the computers do have, a, have, a, have the best interest of voters at heart rather than the best interest of politicians, which is why we're asking for an independent commission it will still be done by computer. It will always be done by computer, unless we get some other invention we haven't thought of. But, um, but there need to be people overseeing the process, and those people should not have the conflict of interest of wanting to keep themselves and their friends in office. No, it's an excellent point. I think it circles us back to the, to the earlier discussion about what are the values, what are the criteria, um, uh, and, and who decides. Um, you know, the, the software can be used for both good and evil, 
Um, it's it's that easy to use. Um, so I think it's I think it's important for uh, for all of you, uh, for all of us, to articulate what values we want uh, in in congressional uh, redistricting and legislative redistricting as well. Could I just weigh in one more time? The the, uh, the there are computers. Uh, I have uh, hired a map maker. I've hired a mathematician. Uh, but none of them make any claim that this is purely a mechanical process. In the end, I think Carol's right that, that, that we, we make decisions to, to try to uh, make the map as fair as possible. And so far, no one has figured out a way to do that uh, completely mechanically. I think the computers have been used, misused to, to create gerrymandered maps, um, and I think computers should be used in mathematical algorithms to create fair maps, uh, but in the end, uh, there is some subjectivity in, in, this, in this decision, and, and, uh, uh, which is why we human beings uh, ultimately have to be the, the, the final arbiter of what we think fair is. And can I just say one more thing? Um, <clears throat> the comment that I would love to hear is, what matters to you when a map is drawn? Is it that Montgomery County be, be restored to having its own Congress representative, congressional representative, I can't say congressman because I'd love to see it be a congresswoman. Um, sometime, someday, could we do that? Um, so what matters? Or in Philly, what matters? You know, the Philly District 1 kind of has wandered out of Philly and actually comes up to Swarthmore to ensure something for somebody. Um, what matters to you when the districts are drawn in and around this region? That would be a comment that I think would be incredibly helpful for this panel. Add back to that value again is to make sure that we have a value of racial equity in this conversation. I think oftentimes we miss that point when we're talking about maps. Um, one of the points that wasn't done in Pennsylvania, there wasn't a racial gerrymandering case, but in other states like North Carolina and in Wisconsin and other states, there were racial gerrymandering. They were compacting people of color so that they would not only would not spread out to any other uh, congressional district. It's important that we have that conversation, gender, racial equality. Um, and we also have to remember when we talk about our values to also remember there are people that live in other parts of this state. That's why I commend the governor for going across the state because sometimes our values and interests may differ, but I do believe at the core essence of every uh, citizen of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania should be fairness, should be a sense of, of competitiveness, should be a sense of I want to be able to have my vote, vote count when I cast it. Um, and I want to be able to not have to drive five hours to see my congressman. Okay. So I see a hand back there from a student, and then we're going to come down to the councilman here in the front. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Megan Lynan. I'm a junior political science major here at St. Joseph's, and I'm from Doylestown, Pennsylvania, originally. Um, so my comment is, I actually, on behalf of St. Joe's, I attended a conference this past summer on women in Pennsylvania state politics, and one of the most disheartening facts that I learned is that only 18.6% of our state legislature are represented by women. So my comment is, is that when we're considering this conversation on, on redistricting, how can we do it in a way that we can empower more women to uh, participate in our state legislature and have them equally represented? Because I personally feel and a lot of um, my fellow colleagues, female colleagues in this room feel that our commonwealth will be better off if we are more equally represented. What's your name? What's your name again? I'm sorry. Megan. Hey, Megan, I'm Jasmine. That's exactly why we exist at She Can Win, because there is a direct correlation for gender parity, to gerrymandering in terms of not enough women are at the table. The maps are being drawn, the decisions are made, and then it trickles down. When we start electing more women across the aisle, that is when we get a fair and equal representation in the government. And furthermore, and when we start electing women of color, because 18.6, it's 2% women of color. Okay, if there are 535 seats in Congress, 138 of them belong to women, 36 of them belong to women of color. We have to get parity. And that is something that She Can Win uh, 
emerge, represent. We are all committed to getting to parity by 2020. And it is an uphill battle, and we need each and every one of you in here pushing the message along with us. I think, yeah. I think the term that is often being used nowadays is a reflective democracy. We, we need it to reflect the constituents of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, gender, race, et cetera. So um, here at Common Cause, we, we've been about that. We're going to continue to make sure we are pushing in every way, shape, and form. Even when you get down, and I know there's been the, the glamour is around the congressional maps, but in a minute, we're going to have to begin to really look at our state senate and state legislative districts as well um, to see how they have been impacted by a possible gerrymander. So the best thing, and thank you, Governor, best thing we can do is to come up with the right process based on the right values and give it to an independent commission so we don't have to deal with the backroom politics, the gender uh, inequities that happen, the racial inequities that happen, but actually feel like it's being done the right way. Let, let me just add to, Megan, what you said, and I think I'm right, Pennsylvania is 49th in terms of the percentage of women yeah, that's right. in our legislature. Yeah. That's pathetic. Yeah. I think we're only ahead of Mississippi. Yes. Apologies to anybody here from yeah, Mississippi. Yeah, I think it is Mississippi, yeah. But that's, that's not right, and it's, a, it's a one, just yet another reflection of how unfair our system is and why people could legitimately say, I'm not sure I want to even get involved if that's what it looks like. So we've got to change this. Jasmine mentioned um, the, the correlation between gerrymandering and gender parity. And, and if, if the maps are being drawn to give assigned districts to colleagues or friends that are selected by those who are in power to draw the maps, those people will be like them. And that's what we've seen across the state. There are some courageous women, there are some courageous people of color who have managed to break their way in, but they have to fight incredibly hard to get there, or some, some strange upheaval that opens a district in an unexpected way. Those are the only way that people are able to enter what is currently a, a closed door because of gerrymandering. If it goes to an independent commission that reflects the population of the state and the and the districts are drawn in a fair way that opens the door to a genuinely reflective democracy and that's what we'd like to see. Oh good afternoon everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm, I'm representing the enlightened males today <laughs> who, who um, and, and as a person who has nine grandchildren who happen to be female I'm for gender equality um, but I want to shift a little bit and when we start talking about these maps and where these lines fall um, one of the things that matters to me is understanding that we have a shared value with folk in the house the senate and the congress so we can get stuff done and that's, there's another word that you insert in the middle but get stuff done and 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 why that is important is because you can have conflict. I, I represent an eclectic district. Goes all the way up to Swarthmore, that's my boundary. Um, and I've learned how to be a um, environmentally sensitive uh, council person. Had to learn about the spotted owls and the horned toads that once a year traverse right across the road and we, we guard them. But also I represent some of the poorest areas uh, in the city of Philadelphia from Market Street to Main Street. But what is important to me is as my state delegation shares a map with me and um, my, my colleague going over here represents another part of my district that we work together uh, in a common purpose for uh, the folk that we represent. Um, D'Alessio works really hard. I work with her, I listen to her. But no line can keep you safe. The price you pay as an elected official for the space you occupy is service. So when we went through um, uh, redrawing our district, I got a, I had five divisions in North Philly. I'm a West Philly kind of guy, but I had to learn North Philly values very quickly. But if you get out and work, that's your security. It's not drawing a good old guy's lines that protect you. Working with people do. So. Um, I hope in our evolution, uh, as we draw lines, that we pick people that don't mind p talking to people and working for people. And if we do that, you know, they can represent 
whatever constituency and and um, I'm looking forward to the new lines. So it does trickle down to uh, the city council. And one provision that we have is if we don't draw those lines at a certain fiscal cliff, we don't get paid. So those lines get drawn. In the essence of time, I would ask that maybe only one or two panelists respond so we can get to maybe one or two more comments from the audience. Thank you. One of the worst results of gerrymandering is the dysfunction that it's caused both in Congress and in the state capitals. Uh, because the way these districts are drawn, they are drawn to enhance political partisanship. And if you look around this map, for example, I live in Dauphin County. Harrisburg is carved out away from the rest of Dauphin County. Reading is carved out from the rest of Berks County. Uh, you go on, Coatesville is carved out from the rest of Chester County. So we end up not only with very few contested races, we even end up with uh, very few races where there are even candidates. We had 228 uh, races in Pennsylvania last year, open seats or seats, and of those, 98 had nobody running in the general election against the, uh, whoever was the leading candidate. The result of that is that we have candidates who really focus on the primary and really focus on the people on the extremes in their party in order to win those primaries and do not focus on the people in the middle that determine the general elections. And as a result, and you've seen it in Harrisburg, there are so many people that really do not want to have any kind of compromise. They really want to instead carry out the agenda of the people and the extremes in their party. And I think one of the best things that could happen if we do have better districts is that the uh, ability of the House of Representatives and the Senate in Harrisburg and Congress would really uh, dramatically improve. Okay, we're going to take a comment from the gentleman in there. <clears throat> this is a question, actually, for anybody on the um, panel. It's my impression that at least 90% of the people in this uh, room have been already sold and they're against gerrymandering, and the block is getting those two um, chairs, one in the House and one in the Senate, Metcalf and um, the other guy, I forget his name. Have any of you guys spoken to these two chairs and what kind of response did you get from them? Do they know what the material, what the contents of those two bills are? Do they have any understanding of what the bills are trying to, the checks and balances that those bills provide? Do they understand that? And what's their attitude about it? Thank you. I have um, spoken with Senator Fulmer several times. He actually is very open to the idea of redistricting reform. He believes it needs to happen. Um, there seem to be some political challenges with the leadership within the Senate that we're hoping to find a way to move through. But he certainly has read the bill in great detail, um, has a lot of thoughts about specifics within the bill, and is interested in seeing this process move forward. In the House, it's a very different dynamic. Um, the chair of that committee has um, made it incredibly clear that he does not intend at any point to read the bill, to think about the bill, to entertain conversation about the bill. doesn't matter that 102 of his colleagues have co-sponsored the bill or that people within his committee have requested that he hold a hearing. It doesn't matter that he has a constituent who has showed up at his office at least 15 times now personally asking for a meeting to discuss it. He refuses to even respond. So to me, that's a place where shame is very appropriate. Um, I have personally gone into his office numerous times to ask to speak with him. I've emailed him. There is no response from him to anybody, including his colleagues. To me, that's, that's unconscionable. And anybody who allows that to continue, I would say um, either has no leadership ability at all or doesn't understand what democracy looks like. So we'll take this last question and I mean comment from uh, this young lady right here and then we'll close it out with the governor. Thank you. Hi, Governor, and hello to the rest of the panel. Well, thank you for coming to St. Joe's today. Um, my name's Anne Marie Maloney. I'm a senior and I'm a political science major at St. Joe's. I'm also a Pennsylvanian, lifelong Pennsylvanian. I live in Montgomery County in Bluebell and in the 13th district. 
Um, and although my family is split by partisanship, uh, where my uh, parents tend to be more Republican and me and my siblings tend to be more Democratic, we both agree that just like after this process happens, what really needs to be done is that we need to have an independent commission to draw the district lines. Um, because although my family is very happy with our representation, both in state government and in Congress, I don't think most of the state of Pennsylvania is that help that um, happy with their representation in uh, government. Um, so yeah, in the future, after this process happens, we definitely need to pursue an independent uh, commission uh, forcefully. But I'd also like to say that during this process, a lot of people have been talking about the competing values of gerrymandering and of redistricting and of what um, serves citizens and constituents the best. I would find I find that a lot of the districts around here are at least fairly competitive. But I don't think it's serving our area very well. Um, I don't think my county is being represented very fairly in Congress or in um, state represent state government, and so I would ask that the the districts be drawn so that they're more representative of the wishes of the and the interests of the citizens in those districts. Thank you again. Uh, um, I, I think, first of all, Anne-Marie, um, I applaud you for being a political science major. I think that's an yes. a, a m amazing, very good. And, and, and you're right. And I think the, the point that you're making is, is that this is a, a whole different dimension than, than the, the, the normal day, daily give and take of, of politics, where we ought to argue with each other and, and debate and, and do all the good things that, that a, a free and open democracy should do. The problem is we can't really get to that. Uh, if people feel so sheltered and so cosseted by the system that they can do what Carol said the chair of, of that committee in the House is, is doing, which is basically just to shut off debate to the point where he's not even reading the, the bill. That's not the way a democracy is supposed to work. And if it does work that way, then it doesn't matter what disagreements you have or what arguments you want to have, that's not the forum you're going to want to have that debate, that argument. Uh, and it's not going to help anybody. It's certainly not going to help our democracy. So I, you're right. We need to to move into a, a, a new world. And this should be something that both Republicans and Democrats should, should embrace because it's going to make uh, uh, our jobs a, a lot more fulfilling and a lot better. Anything else? Anything else? All right. Well, this concludes our program. Um, I would ask that everyone just remain seated um, just so we can get the panelists out into the hallway. Um, and then if you have still some comments that you would like to share with them, they will be out there. Thank you.